Welcome to Community Conversations. I'm Frederick County Executive Jan Gardner, and today I'm pleased to have as my guest Rick Harkham. Rick has joined our budget officer office as the uh, director, and so I want to welcome you. So thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. So why don't you start off by telling people a little bit about yourself? So a uh, little bit personal, a little bit professional. Personal, I am a longtime but not lifetime resident of Frederick County. Like many others, I moved here in the early 90s with my family, um, attracted by affordable housing and the fabulous public school system. I have three kids. All three of my kids went through Frederick County Public Schools, including Frederick Community College, before moving on to four-year programs. Um, so I was very impressed by that entire educational experience for all of them. Professionally, up until very recently, I was working in budget and finance at a very large organization in Washington, D.C., and this opportunity presented itself, and I thought, this could be a dream come true to actually work in the community where I live. Um, so we began having conversations, and you fast forward today, and here I am. Right. Well, we really uh, look forward to having you. Uh, you do have a very nice resume, lots of background in uh, budget and management, mm -hmm. and really performance management. So I think we can see some progress in how we present our budget to the public uh, in future years. I, I do want to take the opportunity to share a little bit about how the budget process works under charter government uh, because it's different than what people are accustomed to when we yes. had the county commission form of government. Uh, under charter, the county executive does prepare and present the budget mm -hmm. required to do that by April 15th, and then the council can review that holds their own sets of public hearings, and of course I hold my public hearings as well, mm -hmm. and uh, they can subtract from the budget, but they can't add to the budget by the charter. So it's a process we're learning here. Mm -hmm. It's very important for people to understand that for something to get in the budget, they really need to um, let yes. the county executive know that through the public hearing processes that we have. So I know you have um, are relatively new on the job, mm -hmm. but um, if you want to provide us some comments on what you think of the budget process to this point, it would be good. Uh, the, the thing that most strikes me is the, the efficiency in this process. I know that committees and compromise are fabulous ways for legislation to be enacted. It's not necessarily the most efficient way for fiscal decisions to be made. So in an organization where there is a chief executive who has a vision and a strategy moving forward, people like me come on board to execute that strategy. And what it does is it drives alignment throughout the organization and hopefully it leads to the most efficient use of resources. So I, I think it's actually a very good organization where with a chief executive giving that overarching directive and a legislative body trying to enact laws and ordinances that support all that, we wind up with the best product possible. So, so what were your impressions of our first, uh, your first public hearing process, our second on the budget this year? Um, I am so deeply impressed at the citizens who come out to these meetings. Everybody in the world is busy. And to have people come from their homes in the evening, come into Winchester Hall, wait in line, take their turn at the microphone to communicate to you what their needs and priorities are was really, really important for me to be able to see that firsthand and experience it. Um, getting that kind of stakeholder input is just critical to having a, a, a well-rounded budget put together. Sometimes when you talk about the budget, people kind of think, oh, gee, all those numbers. But really, um, the budget is where we accomplish all of our goals. Mm -hmm. It establishes our community values and our community priorities. So that public process and, and that uh, vision is very important to that. And, you know, we do have established priorities mm -hmm. here. You mentioned the importance of education to you and your family. Certainly, I had the same experience with my three mm -hmm. children in Frederick County Public Schools. So, you know, education is one of the priorities that mm -hmm. we fund. Certainly, public safety. We're very fortunate to have a safe community. Doesn't happen by accident. Right. And then we have many, many, many other services mm -hmm. that play into that great quality of life that we have here. So what do you think some of the key um, projects are that are going to move forward with this budget? I, I'm most interested that there are both near-term and long-term challenges in front of us. And, and I think everybody knows the challenges about school construction. And you just recently announced some solutions moving forward. So that progress is fantastic. Um, I had the opportunity to go out to the Department of Aging just recently on a, on a budget meeting 
And I heard an interesting statistic I'd never heard before that within a few years, in this county, the population of seniors will actually be larger than the population of school-aged children. Yep. So it, it's not something I need to deal with in this immediate budget environment today, but clearly as your vision charts a course into the future, both of these different populations are going to have challenging needs to meet. Well, I think that's very true. We have a growing senior population, mm -hmm. and of course we see that across the country, right. but in Frederick County, our senior population is projected to grow at twice the rate of the state of Maryland and the, and the country in general. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and it's different. We have to be agile and flexible because so. um, we're going to have a lot of active seniors, and we're gonna have a lot of people living uh, healthier for longer, and I think we have to take advantage of all of that mm -hmm. um, knowledge and expertise and the wisdom. The resources are fantastic that they offer us. And I, I think, still think we're working on that. <laughs> so uh, we'll look to how we can um, really do more than that. Now, as the budget officer, um, what information will we be providing to the public about the budget so that they can try to understand it and participate in a meaningful way? One of the most important things I want to do is move budgeting from spreadsheeting to a way to communicate these budgets uh, in ways that the, the citizens, the public understands. Uh, I'm happy to sit and look at spreadsheets all day long. I love that kind of stuff, but I get it that most people can't look at a spreadsheet and understand what it means. To me, the value of budgeting is not in the rows and columns of numbers, but it's in what those resources produce. And so I'm trying to find more and more ways to communicate the results of the budget and the, the things the budget produces as opposed to just the technical debit credit kind of things. Well, I think that's a great opportunity for us. I've always said in government that we don't do a good job of marketing or mm -hmm. selling the services that we provide. So wherever I go and speak around the county, I'll have people say, you know, what do I get for my tax dollars? Exactly. And it's a good question. I mean, what do, what do you get when you pay for, you know, any other bill that you might have in your household? You want to know what you're getting. People often mention snow removal. I remind them that they actually get the road itself. Yes. And there are, you know, 1,300 miles of roads that we maintain so that people can go wherever it is they need to go. And that's something government provides, as well as their trash collection, mm -hmm. their recycling, and their water and sewer. So, it's really a, a tremendous number of services that I think sometimes people take for granted. I think you're exactly right, and it's one of the things that most struck me as I got here and started digging into the budget is just the breadth of subject matter that this budget covers. And, and I think you're exactly right. Most people aren't aware of product and services that are delivered by Frederick County government, and that's one of the things I want to try and communicate better. Yep. So. And I also think people want to know that they're getting a good bang for the buck. Absolutely. So, you know, how we communicate that mm -hmm. is another challenge. Transparency and accountability are key hallmarks to me in budgeting. If we don't have those two things, then um, we've, we've not met the test. That's right. So there are some things that we can describe uh, very well in terms of value mm -hmm. and how we spend money. And there are some things that are a little more difficult, True. like education. Mm -hmm. Um, we know we want to have a safe community, and we can certainly see that in crime statistics, but how it correlates with how we spend our money yes. is what's a little more difficult to project. So what, what have you found to be your most interesting experience so far in county government? The diversity of subject matter is incredible. I was out at the Division of Fire Services the other day and just getting the opportunity to see firefighter training firsthand. and. To me, it's things I might see on TV on an action-adventure show, but at this moment, it was real to me. And so just that clicked in my head that this is what this budget is all about. That's right. So there's a lot of good things happening in Frederick County. Mm -hmm. I welcome you to the team. Thank you. Um, we're excited to have you. We have a very small budget office, so yes. it is kind of a hands-on job. Lean, mean, efficient. Lean, mean, and Well, efficient. not mean. <laughs> yeah, not we, mean. We, we laugh a lot. So we do, and we're really here to serve the citizens of Frederick County. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for uh, what you've contributed so far, and we look forward to working with you're very you in the welcome. future. So if you're interested in participating in the budget process, um, it will be ongoing uh, for the next several months. The County Council has until May 25th to adopt the budget. I will be presenting the county proposed budget on April 15th. And there'll be lots of public hearings uh, between April 15th and May 25th. So stay tuned and stay involved. And thank you for joining us.